Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Chara Kirk. What's up? We're looking at another new rock stars breakdown. The second one today. This is Obi Wan Kenobi trailer breakdown. Easter eggs and details you miss. I was waiting impatiently for this one because Eric Voss is going to educate me a lot about the things that I'm uncertain about because I haven't been. Well, neither of us have watched the uh, Star Wars Clone Wars TV show, which we're going to do. I don't know if we'll get through the whole thing before Kenobi drops, but we'll try our darndest. So, you guys, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and pretty please vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. While you're subscribing and upvoting, subscribe to New Rock Stars. I was going to say Eric Voss. Same difference. There's a link in the description below. You can click on that link, give the original an upvote, and subscribe to them from there. Here we go. Welcome back to New Rock Stars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the new May the 4th trailer for Obi Wan Kenobi on Disney Plus. We get our first partial looks at Darth Vader in yep. this series, and lots of Oramash to translate. So let's go through this frame by frame. Let's go. I hope they have a soundtrack for this show. Start off by hearing part of the instrumentation of Duel of the Fates. But the melody has been adjusted somewhat. John Williams is actually returning to contribute a new theme for the series, but most ah, of the music ah, is being composed right. by Natalie Holt, who did an amazing job with the music of Loki, and an even okay. better job egging Simon Cowell to protest how reality TV was ruining the music industry. True facts, look it up. <laughs> Good for you, Natalie. Right. A shuttle descends to the new planet on this series, Dai Yu, described as a Hong Kong-like setting. The Inquisitor, named the fifth brother, Sung Kang, leads a squad of stormtroopers into this market, where in the last trailer, I translated all the signs to things like market and gunkin snacks and milk. <sighs> Actually, there's another shot from this location where it looks like it's Haas Market. On to the next clip. Stay hidden. Or we will not survive. Here, the Grand Inquisitor, Rupert Friend, leads the fifth brother and Reva, the second sister, played by Moses Ingram, who did an amazing job in the tragedy of Macbeth. They're walking down the street of Maz Eisley on Tatooine, and I love how they just park their shuttle in the middle of the goddamn street instead of a nearby space. Like the Popos. They are Inquisitors. They can do whatever the hell they want. Yeah. All Inquisitors were former Jedi or Force-sensitive recruits, and the Grand Inquisitor is actually confirmed to be one of those Jedi Temple guards during the trials of Ahsoka Tano and Barriss Afi in Clone Wars that led to Ahsoka leaving the Jedi Order. So this guy was a direct witness to how full of crap the Jedi Order is. <laughs> Rebel Season ah. 1 shows a Grand wow. Inquisitor at his most dastardly, using the corpse of Beresafi's former master, Luminara Unduli, to set a trap for Kanan and Ezra. This series may actually show the moment he captures and tortures her. I mean, I would I would hate to see that, but it'd be cool to see a Luminara cameo, but just, a, you know, uh, for, for a bad reason. Then we see another shot of Obi-Wan gazing out at the Lars homestead with 10-year-old Luke Skywalker, played by Grant Feely, wearing a pod racer helmet as he dreams of being a pilot, and one day killing hundreds of thousands of imps a single shot. On to the next clip. Leave us alone. When the time comes, he must be trained. Like you trained his father. So Joel Edgerton, as Uncle Owen Lars, tells Obi-Wan to back off. Now, there are actually several moments from the comics in which Obi-Wan helped or rescued young Luke and Owen. Actually, right around when this series is set, Obi-Wan will save Owen from the Wookiee Black Kersantan, whom we just oh, saw on the Book of Boba yeah. Fett. And that incident was how BK got that lightsaber burn scar over his eye. So who knows? We could even see that backstory adapted here on this show. Either way, Obi-Wan has not been leaving them alone, nor will he stop. Obi-Wan is pushing for Luke to be trained, perhaps wary that Luke's force sensitivity is bound to be detected on some Sith holocron, and Luke will need to defend himself against Inquisitors who come to find him. Owen really has the best response. Motherfucker, your lesson plan produced the galaxy's worst war criminal. <laughs> Hard pass. And we just gotta point out that maybe it's luck or because of these movies that the show now gets to have Ewan McGregor and Joel Edgerton, two of like the best working actors acting off each other in a Star Wars thing. Both of them doing such a good job, making it so natural, but also evoking the tonality of the actors in the 77 film. I'm just so excited to see these two share a screen again. Let's move on. You still want Kenobi. He's gone. Maybe you've been looking in the wrong places. So Reva walks across the deck of this Fortress Inquisitorius, the partially underwater base of the Inquisitors on the ocean world of Nur, actually relocated here after leaving Coruscant, now really a secret base, and of course, the major location of the Jedi Fallen Order game. This remains oh. the base of operation for the Inquisitors as they do the bidding for Darth Vader to hunt down every Jedi runaway after Order 66 and every Force-sensitive kid. Hanging overhead, Reva, are some TIE fighters ready to deploy, and Reva joins the fifth brother, as well as Indira Varma as that Imperial officer. Her badge actually makes her a colonel, and then 
then on the far left, I think that might be Simone Kessel playing another Inquisitor, kind of looks like the seventh sister, who in Star Wars Rebels accompanies the fifth brother in that whole Malachor storyline with Maul. Now on their table, they review this planet. And if you zoom in and hint, you can actually see some Oribesh there, which translates this planet to Mapuzo, which is actually an obscure planet in Star Wars canon from the Midrim, coming from the Alliance Intelligence Reports of the 1995 wow. Star Wars role-playing game, which was the location of the Mapuzo break-in, where a Rodian bounty hunter named Vadon Lenator was believed to have been a part of that break-in. That's all we really know about That's a really Mapuzo, deep reference. Yeah. Planet names from Star Wars lore, and making them important now. Now behind them are some red shelves that look like lightsabers. I assume one's recovered from the Jedi that they have hunted, which reminds us a lot of the way Grievous would collect lightsabers from Jedi that he had disarmed That's or right. killed. So creepy that they put them on display like this. Then Obi-Wan riding his EOP in the desert, then a shot of these pods blasting away from the Fortress Inquisitorius and up out of the atmosphere of Nur. Could these be runaway Jedi prisoners finally escaping the fortress? And then Reva looks out at the planet of Dayu. On her left is a neon sign translating to milk. And then in blue in the distance, that actually translates to Jawa's market. And then over there, there's a shootout happening, presumably the same one that Obi-Wan is involved with against some of the bounty hunters. Next clip. I want every lowlife and bounty hunter to squeeze him. Okay, a transmission arrives, showing Obi-Wan's file photo from the Jedi archives, I assume, around the era of Revenge of the Sith. The Orbesh translates to transmitting, then wanted Obi-Wan Kenobi offenses, high treason, bounty upon capture. Before we get too far away from the moment that we just saw a second ago, am I the only one who hears, you can't run from me, Shang? Mortal Kombat 1996. <laughs> you can't run, Obi-Wan! You can't run! I think it was 96. I don't remember exactly what year it was. Mid 90s. But like, that's as soon as she says, you can't run from me, Obi-Wan. I'm like, that sounds like Mortal Kombat. Sorry, weird nerd brain. I'm just so impressed that they can translate all of this language mm -hmm. that has been made up. Like, and if Jedi mugshots like this pop up on the show, really then this could be how we see other quick cameos of a number of runaway Jedi, like Yoda, Ahsoka Tano, Cal Kestis, Caleb Doom, Luminar and Dooley, a mysterious floating egg cradle that none of the Jedi opened in the temple. <laughs> <laughs> wants to send some bounty hunters after Obi-Wan. And there's a quick shot of this Loam droid. I think this might be for Loam, the droid bounty hunter who showed up in Empire Strikes Back, along with Boba Fett and Bosk as part of that crew that Vader recruited to find Han Solo. Kenobi tussles with the horned Zabrak in a real fun sweater. And then a shot of Reva in the fortress, lights of her drawn as she's flanked by purge troopers. These are also from Fallen Order. Obi-Wan then takes down some- That area that she's walking on is probably not related at all, but straight up looks like the Star Wars ride. At, yeah. at Disneyland. Yeah. The epic one. If you guys haven't done it, you got to do it at least once before you die. Like, you got to. Yeah, that's, you, what I, that's what it was making me think of. And that's you know, why I was like getting so happy because I'm like, I, I know, freaking love that drop. That, that Star ride. Wars ride at Disneyland is literally the eighth wonder of the world. You got to do it. Some stormtroopers, while an Imperial probe droid is wrecked behind him and he fires a blaster, so uncivilized, he cannot use a lightsaber that would out him as a Jedi. Then that droid labeled Ned takes a blast while it looks like he and a stormtrooper might be getting force pulled. And then a shot of Kamel oh, wow. Nanjiani's character. So yeah. he is not voicing a droid, he is playing a live action character and he looks terrified. I am guessing he is a runaway Jedi who might come into contact with Obi-Wan. We're gonna get a new adorable droid model with some mouse ears. Aww. And then the shot of Breva screaming after Obi-Wan, warning him that Vader will find him. And we actually see this badass in the next section. <laughs> Man. So Vader's <laughs> robotic arm gets twisted onto the stump where you can actually see his skin looking burnt and pale. And then a shot of Vader's midsection as his breathing apparatus gets plugged in. And yeah, my dudes, these are prods actually jabbing into his abdomen, connecting with his lungs. It's incredibly painful. Kind of like the needles that are in his helmet that fuse into his brain. It helps feed his rage, making him a more powerful Sith and making him one with the suit, more machine than man. Do you think we'll get a moment in this show where Vader stands up and goes, no. They have that Padme reveal again that she died. Yeah. We gotta do it. And in addition to that iconic puff of Vader's breath, I love that they include that high frequency whistle that we heard when the mask was first lowered onto his face in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, I don't, I don't love that sound, it's very high pitched. <laughs> yeah, that's the same sound. 
this detail. Yeah, the final title melody evokes the Imperial March. But unlike the last trailer, which formed the Disney Plus logo with Obi-Wan's blue lightsaber, this one cuts it with red. Mm. Uh, yeah. I think I was uh, a puppy in my former lifetime or something. Why? Because when I heard that whistle, I'm just like, oh! <laughs> that whistling sound as the as the thing is pushed yeah. into his abdomen. The same one that was used on the helmet in episode three. So it seems to me that he wasn't able to really tell you too many more new details because the trailer didn't give you too much more new footage. Yeah. It was largely the same stuff reused. He tried his best to expand upon it and like reveal any new new hidden details that were shown in this trailer that weren't shown in the previous one. But what strikes me is that uh, Kumail Nanjiani is loved the hell out of by Disney. Yeah. I mean, this is his third time Disney has employed him, right? Because he, he Eric Voss mentioned that he played a droid. I can't remember if that was in um, Rogue One or something, but anyway. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Eternals and then yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know what? Watching this, though, I do feel a little bit anxious going into the show because when he's breaking it down and going like, oh, and this is how it's connected to Rebels and Clone Wars or yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. and I'm going, mm, so not caught up. Having slight panic attacks. No, I don't think you have to worry. I don't think you have to worry. I think that just like back in the day, you know, you watch the Star Wars movies, you could get way more lore out of the books that support what you're watching in the films that help you to understand exactly what's going on, who these characters are, this random person walking by in the background, like who right. that guy is or who that woman is, whatever, that alien creature. Like there, there's so much more, uh, there's a plethora of detail you can extract from the stories and whatnot. That's what those animations are leading into this show. If you don't watch those animations, I think you'll be all right. You're just not gonna get the deep lore, the deep references that, you know, come from if you have been watching those shows. I know, and literally in the trailer reaction, I was like, oh no, I'm sure they're gonna be okay. Like they, yeah. they've done a very good job. It's for both. Yeah. No, it has to be for both. Like that's, I feel like there's no way it can't be. The thing about it is most people who are gonna watch this show haven't seen that cartoon. Statistically speaking, like it's, sure. I, I'm pretty sure. That being said, I would like to try and watch as much of it as possible to extract as much as I can out of the show. I mean, mm -hmm. it, that's just fun. I'm not gonna allow myself to feel bad or bullied, you know, just for not knowing some kind of reference that was in the animated series. I'm gonna try my best to get to it, but like, you know. It's like, there's, there's a lot. lot. There's a lot. Yeah. There's such an abundance of content outside of Star Wars. But anyway, yeah, I enjoyed his breakdown and I, I enjoyed the little little hidden clues. The reference to Return of the Jedi that I would have, or, um, well, just the, the, the original trilogy that I would have never caught. He he was referencing one of the droid uh, soldiers yeah. that was part of the pack that w where we first met Boba Fett. And I was like, oh, like, that's not something I would have ever connected. So you guys, that's it for now. Thanks so much for hanging out. H hit the bell icon, uh, hit the subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications. I'm Jabby Koi. This is Achara Cook. Peace out.